good stories are worth retelling, such as Bram Stoker's Dracula, which was made into so many films it's impossible to count. But have you ever wondered which movie follows the book the closest? Oddly, it seems like a debated topic. Just to clarify, I'm not talking about what's everybody's favorites, I'm talking about which one is most faithful to the book, counting theatrical, TV, and direct-to-video. I'm going to put together the facts and attempt to answer the question once and for all. I've narrowed it down to 12 contenders. The 1922 silent version, Nosferatu. The 1931 universal version, starring Bela Lugosi. The simultaneously filmed Spanish language version. The 1953 Turkish version. The 1958 Hammer version. The 1970 version, directed by Jesus Franco. The 1973 made-for-TV version, starring Jack Palance, aired in 74. The 1977 BBC version. The 1979 universal version, starring Frank Langella. The 1979 Nosferatu remake. The Big Budget mainstream 1992 version directed by Francis Ford Coppola, and at last, the 2006 BBC version. So let's begin the contest. Here's what we'll do. We'll give each film a point for every character and event included, and the film with the most points wins. In the event of a tie or close race, we'll look into which film has the most things that aren't in the book. Okay. Let's start with the characters. Keep in mind, Nosferatu and the Turkish version change the names, but if you can still recognize the role, it counts. Keep your eye on the score if you'd like and place your bets. We're gonna go fast. First up, the character Renfield. As you can see here, he's included in most versions. The Turkish version, not really. Whenever there's a close call, it'll be marked with a red X. Next, Jonathan Harker, all get a point. Mina, all get a point. In Langella and Nosferatu remake, she's named Lucy, even though the role is clearly Mina. Very confusing. Lucy, all of them except the Nosferatus. The original had a minor unrelated character, Ruth, who was called Lucy in the English public domain translation, but was too minor to count. In the Langella version, she's called Mina, a switcheroo. Arthur Holmwood. In the Franco version, they call him Quincy, even though he mostly fits the Arthur role. The first BBC version combines his character with Quincy Morris, calling him Quincy Holmwood. That's half a point. Quincy Morris. BBC gets the other half point, but Coppola is the only one to use the real character. Way to go, Coppola. Dr. Seward, as you can see, most of them. Dr. Van Helsing, all of them except the original Nosferatu, which had a minor character who was called Van Helsing in the English public domain translation, but he does nothing. Of course, you can't have a Dracula film without Dracula, but in the book, he's described as an old man with a mustache. Well, do you see the mustache? Nope, 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 yes, nope, 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 nope. A dozen Dracula films, and the only one where Dracula actually looks like Dracula is the Franco version. Big gold medal for Franco. Now, the various elements from the book. Every film depicts the castle. Surprising that none of them shot on location in Romania. Only three have Dracula de-age, getting younger from feeding on fresh blood. Dracula turns into a bat, most of them, as you can see. Dracula turns into a wolf or large dog. Dracula can turn into mist. Dracula can climb walls like a lizard. Dracula has no reflection in the mirror. Dracula can only sleep in his native soil. Dracula is repelled by a cross or crucifix. Is also repelled by garlic. No wolf's bane, that wasn't in the book. The sacred wafer, very big in the book, but not big in the films. Dracula sighted outside in the daytime. Nope, sunlight doesn't kill him. Multiple narrators and journal entries. Big award for Coppola. Now it's time for the plot details. Events can happen off screen as long as they're explained. Characters and locations can be changed as long as the event is still recognizable. Jonathan Harker travels to Transylvania. Frightened townspeople warn Jonathan not to go to the castle. It takes place on St. George's Eve, not Walpurgis night like in the Universals. The coachman who brings Jonathan to the castle is Dracula. Dracula shoes away the wolves. Dracula wants to learn English culture. Jonathan sells him the property in England. Dracula says, listen to them. Children of the night, what music they make. Three vampire women seduce Jonathan, and Dracula gets pissed off. Dracula gives them a baby to feed on. Jonathan discovers Dracula asleep in his coffin. Jonathan learns he's a prisoner in the castle and makes several escape attempts. Dracula travels to England aboard a ship called the Demeter and kills everybody on board. 
Mina waits for her husband, Jonathan, to arrive, taking place at a real location in Whitby, a cemetery by the sea. The first BBC version gets a big point for filming on the actual spot that inspired Bram Stoker. Renfield is observed at the asylum for his odd habits of eating flies. Lucy sleepwalks under Dracula's spell. Dracula preys upon Lucy. The details vary, but as long as he drains her blood, it counts. The Nosferatu's, it's only telepathic. Lucy is ill with bite marks on her neck. Needs to happen early as it's the first clue to Dracula's invasion. Lucy's condition is examined and she's given a blood transfusion. Dr. Van Helsing educates everybody on vampire lore. Lucy, now as a vampire, preys on young children. Van Helsing confronts Lucy. Keep in mind, with Langella, her name switched with Mina, but they also encounter Mina to make it extra confusing. Van Helsing frees Lucy's soul by driving a wooden stake through her heart. The Lugosi version cuts all explanation because back then, God forbid, you couldn't even talk about a stake going through a heart, even though it was in the damn book. The Spanish version doesn't mess around. It explains what happened without having to see it. Next, they stuff Lucy's mouth with garlic. Rock on, BBC, the only one. After that, they cut off her head. Renfield gives his rats, rats monologue. The two universal versions got the whole speech almost verbatim. In the Langella one, it's shortened and rushed, but it's still there. Renfield begs Dr. Seward to let him out of the asylum because he knows if he stays there, something bad will happen to Mina. Dracula kills Renfield. The heroes locate Dracula's boxes of soil and contaminate them. In Carfax Abbey, they have a brief encounter with Dracula. Arthur sees his face in the dark, and the whole place comes alive with rats. Franco and BBC acknowledge the face, and Coppola gets the rats, but moves it to Mina's bedroom. Dracula forces Mina to drink his blood, beginning her slow transformation into a vampire. BBC 06, however, gives the scene to Lucy. There's a standoff with Dracula, where the heroes use crosses and other things to send him back, jumping through a window. Mina develops a psychic link to Dracula. She's the only one who knows he's traveling back to Transylvania. They all follow Dracula to Transylvania. Only half the films acknowledge this final act. Van Helsing and Mina encounter the three vampire brides outside of Dracula's castle, and Van Helsing makes a circle of holy wafers as his defense. It's only included in BBC and Coppola. These two films are really duking it out. The vampire brides are found sleeping in their coffins. In the book, Van Helsing stakes them through the heart and cuts off their heads. Five films each get parts of this scene right. Dracula is transported by traveling gypsies. The heroes battle the gypsies. The heroes seize Dracula's coffin. Jonathan slashes Dracula's throat while Quincy stabs his heart. Well, every film kills off Dracula, but it's usually sunlight or impaling with a stake. Coppola is the only one that got it close enough. Quincy dies from wounds inflicted from the battle with the gypsies. At last, in the final chapter, the rest of the characters return to Transylvania years later to pay their respects to Quincy. Only the BBC version includes this final scene. And there you have the final score. As you can see, the 1977 BBC version comes out on top, but the Coppola version trails very close behind. One could argue that there are other plot points to consider, so there is a margin of debate. For that reason, I think it's worth bringing up the creative departures the two films bring to the table. Which one deviates more? The BBC version makes Mina and Lucy sisters and combines Quincy and Arthur, not to mention has some really weird video effects. All pretty minor things. Coppola, on the other hand, has a huge opening introduction explaining Dracula's origin which has nothing to do with the book. Contrary to popular belief, it was never proven Stoker based Dracula on the historical figure Vlad the Impaler. Mina attempts to seduce and kill Van Helsing, Renfield was Jonathan's predecessor in the real estate business, the costumes and production design are heavily exaggerated, Dracula has a baboon's butt on his head, he draws a sword on Jonathan, has a romance with Mina, considers her the reincarnation of his dead wife, and they try to make Dracula sympathetic. Even though it uses a commendable amount of source material, it's primarily Coppola's vision, not Stoker's. The BBC version, for the most part, restrains from going on its own creative tangents. It just simply sticks to the material, as dry as it is. I concur with the score, and can say without any doubt on my mind, the 1977 BBC version, Count Dracula, is the most faithful 
to the book. And just to reiterate, this has nothing to do with preference. I personally find the Coppola version more entertaining, but that wasn't the contest. Now, as other Dracula films come about, the contest may still go on. The funny thing is, it's a contest where nobody wanted to be the winner. Each film wanted to invent something new to keep the story fresh, but the most refreshing thing to do would actually be to make the first ever page-by-page -page adaptation. Yeah, it would be a long movie, it would have to be a trilogy and go full Peter Jackson style, or better yet, a TV series. Netflix or anybody who's listening, you have an easy win here.